Hey everyone, I just decided when I work out the exam review questions we didn't get to, I might as well videotape it in case that is helpful for some of you all. So starting at the beginning, we uh, this is just all about factoring and using the zero product principle. And so here we're just doing the A and M method. This is considered to be kind of one of the easier ones. And so we're just undoing the FOIL process. And so the first two values multiply to give us x squared, which would be x and x. And then see the outer, the outer and the inner add up to that 12 in the middle. And then the, the last two multiply to give us that minus 45. So I'm going to have one positive and one negative. And in this case, I think it's going to be a 15 and a negative 3. Because 15 times negative 3 is negative 45. And if I add those values together, it adds up to 12. So it doesn't matter what order I put them in, but I need the plus with the 15 and a minus with the 3. And so I factored it. And so now what we want to do here is um, set each one of those equal to 0 because they're being multiplied together. And if one of them is 0, the whole thing goes to 0. So um, this one would be what? Negative 15 because if I plug in negative 15 plus 15, that's 0. And then the other one that would be a positive 3. So those are my two solutions that would cause that equation to equal 0. And if you want to have some fun or extra practice, you can plug in negative 15 or you can plug in positive 3 into the original and you will see that it does work. Okay, number 2, let's see. So I've got 5x squared plus 20x equals 0. So whenever you see two terms, you sometimes might think difference of two squares, but in this particular case, I can't do that. But there is a GCF. There is a greatest common factor. And so I'm going to factor out a 5x, and that would leave me behind with x plus 4, and then equals 0. Okay, so what we have going on here? Well, you have 5 times x, and then times... Um, x plus 4. Well, there's nothing really I can do about the 5, but if I were to let x equal 0, the whole thing would just equal 0, right? Because 5 times 0 is 0, and 0 times whatever this is is 0, right? And then same thing here with this guy. If I were to let x equal negative 4, this would turn into a 0. Once again, it would wipe everything else out. It doesn't matter what everything else is. If any of those factors, which is a fancy word for um, multiplication. If any one of these factors that are getting multiplied, um, that would cause it to collapse and equal zero right there. Um, okay, so here we are. Uh, three is a little bit more challenging um, because of that two in front of the x squared, but before I even get started there, I have to set the equation equal to zero. So I'll subtract by um, eight on both sides to get started. And let's see, set that equal to zero. Now, you can do guess and check, and if you're going to do guess and check, you probably don't need my help. Um, that would be where you're kind of doing what I did up here on number one, except that that 2x squared does make the process definitely more challenging. I'm going to go ahead and show you the way um, I did it in class. But, you know, if you have another method that works for you, you should go ahead and continue to use that if it works for you. So the way I like to do this is I multiply the, the leading coefficient by the constant on the back, and that's, what, negative 16. And then I'm kind of playing that game again, the A&M game. I'm trying to figure out what two numbers would multiply to give me negative 16, but at the same time, those two numbers need to add to give me 15, and I'm just using A and B as unknown values. So two numbers I don't know multiply to give me negative 16, but those same two numbers, when they add together, they add up to 15. And so that would be a positive 16 and a negative 1, right? If you multiply that, that's negative 16. If you add that, it's positive 15. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to manipulate this by changing that out. So I'm still going to have my 2x squared, but I'm going to change out that 15x for a plus 16x and then minus 1x, or just x, and then minus 8 equals zero. And so basically I just, I swapped it out for this, but it's equivalent. It's the same thing. Just like four quarters is equivalent to a dollar, I just uh, swapped that out. And so then I'm going to do factor by grouping now. So on the first set, I can pull out a 2x, and I'll go ahead and do that, and that'll leave me with an x plus 8. 
Well, in the second part, that's weird. I got a minus X minus eight, and I want the opposite of that. So what I'm going to do here is I need to manipulate this by pulling out a negative one. Basically, I'm dividing those by negative one, which causes a sign change. And so now I've got that match that I wanted. And so then from here, I'm going to factor out the X plus eight. So now that's what these two quantities have in common. So I'm going to factor out the X plus eight. And then my other factor is going to be this two X minus one. So then two X minus one is my other factor. And um, I'm kind of running out of room, but if you set, you know, if you're trying to figure out what makes each one of these factors equal zero, the first one's pretty easy. It's just a negative eight, right? So that's one of my answers. And then here you'd set that equal to zero. You would add one and divide by two. So you'd get one half. So one half would be my other solution for that one. All right, so moving on. On number five and six, this says use the square root property. So the square root property is basically um, to nullify my square power, I'm gonna have to square root both sides. But if I have a constant on one side, uh, which just means no variables, right? Um, then I have to put the plus or minus symbol with it. So on the left side, sure, it nullifies that square power, and I'm just going to have an x plus 3. And on the right side, I'm going to be left with a plus or minus the square root of negative 10. And you might be thinking, oh, no, I got a negative. Well, uh, this is something from day one that we talked about. Whenever you square root a negative, which you can do, and, I mean, there's a lot more to this, but um, for what we... For our, the purpose of our course, the only thing we're really concerned about is when you square root a negative, it will appear as an I on the outside. So we're going to have plus or minus I, and then now it's just squared a positive 10, okay? Like I said, it's a pretty interesting topic, but we just, we don't have the time in this course to really dive too deep into that. But um, that's what we do. And then you look at the square root of 10. Well, I could break it up into a 2 and a 5, but... I can't square root 2 or 5, so actually I, I can't really do anything else with the square root of 10. I have one last thing to do, though. I'm going to go ahead and subtract 3 from both sides, and I like to kind of just wedge it in right here after the equal sign. So I'm going to have x is equal to negative 3 plus or minus i square root of 10. And that answer is fine. That answer is great. But just to be clear, there is two answers there. There's the negative 3 plus i square root of 10, and then there's also the negative 3 minus i square root of 10. Um, you can just leave it like this What I have boxed here. Okay, you don't have to break them apart, but I just do like to emphasize that there are really two solutions. Okay, then let's see. For um, number 6, I don't have a lot of room, but I'm going to try to squeeze this in here. We're going to square root both sides, kind of like what we just did on the other one. I have to put that plus or minus. And so that releases, the, it nullifies that square power. So I'm going to be left with 3x minus 4 equals plus or minus the square root of 18. Okay, so for the square root of 18, I can break that apart into a couple different things, right? I could break it into a 6 and a 3. But the thing is, 6 and 3 aren't perfect squares. So what I want to do is I'm actually going to break that into a 9 and a 2. So I'm going to have 3x minus 4 equals plus or minus. We're going to break this into a square root of 9 times the square root of 2, which now 9 is a perfect square, so I can simplify that. So let's see. We're going to have 3x minus 4 equals plus or minus 3 square roots of 2. And then from here, I just need to solve for x. So I'm going to add 4 to both sides. And once again, I'm going to just kind of wedge it on the other side, the equal sign. And then we will divide everything by 3 in just a second. So let's see, 4 plus or minus 3 square roots of 2. And then we'll divide everything by 3. And I would just leave it this way. Um, so I'm left with x equals 4 plus or minus 3 square roots of 2, all divided by 3. All of it's divided by 3. Okay. I emphasize that because a lot of times students will want to cancel out the 3s. And you can, but which, the only way you can do that is if you break it into two fractions. 
I would just leave it like this, okay? I would just leave it like this, but I do want to show you this just because um, the more we know, the better off we're going to be. But I would leave it like this, but if you did want to simplify it, you would have to do it like this. You'd have to have 4 divided by 3 plus or minus 3 square roots of 2 divided by 3. Then you could cancel out those right there. And so then this is also a correct answer, 4 over 3 plus or minus square root of 2. And so that's correct also. Um, but like I said, I would just I would just leave it like this because um, what if you make a mistake, right? So just leave it like that. All right, let's flip to my next page. Let's see. So this is the quadratic equation. So that equation is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4a. Um, oops. <laughs> getting ahead of myself. b squared, I don't know why I put that. Okay, b squared minus 4ac and then all divided by 2a. All right, so what we got to do here first is set this equal to zero to figure out what our a, b, and c values are. So um, I, I want to keep my a value positive, so I'm going to move everything to the left. So I'm going to add 8 x to both sides, and I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides. And so let's see, we're going to end up with 4x squared plus 8x minus 6 equals 0. And so there's my A value, there is my B value, and there is my C value. And um, let's go ahead and plug it in. So let's see, we're going to have x equals, uh, let's see, um, negative 8 plus or minus the square root of, let's see, b squared, which would be 8 squared, minus 4 times my a value, times my c value, and then all divided by 2 times my a value. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and start to clean this up. Let's see, so x equals negative 8 plus or minus the square root this is going to become 64, and then when I multiply all this together, let's see, that's going to be minus 90, negative 96. So I'm going to have double negatives there, so that will actually turn into addition. And so I'm going to have 64 plus 96. So let's see, I get negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 160 all divided by 8 right there. So I multiplied 4 times 4 times negative 6. That's where that negative 96 came from. I have the double negative, so I ended up doing 64 plus 96, which is 160. Then, you know, look at your perfect squares. So your perfect squares are 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, and so on. And the one that jumps out to me is 16 because I could break this up into the square root of 16 times the square root of 10. Um, and the square root of 16 is 4, so this would be 4 square roots of 10. And so that's what I'm going to replace that with. So I end up with negative 8 plus or minus 4 square roots of 10, all divided by 8. And then... Whenever you're reducing this, so remember on the previous page, we, I had to break it apart if I wanted to reduce. Here, all three of them are reducible. But whenever you have a square root, just ignore that in the simplifying process. You're never going to – the only way you simplify square roots are by breaking them apart. I, I wouldn't say only, that's the only time, but at least what we're doing in this course, um, that's the only way we're going to kind of work with them is simplifying them by breaking them apart. We're not actually going to, like, divide that value inside there. But what I do notice is the minus, the negative 8, and the 4, and the 8, what do they all have in common that you can divide them by? 4. So divide them all by 4. So negative 8 divided by 4 would be a negative 2, plus or minus 4 divided by 4 is 1. 1 times the square root of 10 would just be the square root of 10, so I don't really need that 1 in front. If you, if you put it there, it's fine. It's not incorrect. It's just not necessary. And then 8 divided by 4 is... Two. And then I would once again I would leave it like this. You could break this into two separate fractions if you really wanted to to 
cancel out the twos, but you can't just cancel them out right here. You can't do that. You'd have to break it into two separate fractions. Um, I'm just going to leave it like this because this is fine. Okay, and now I have one more here doing the quadratic formula. Let me see if I can, well, yeah, that's fine. All right, so let's see. My A value is 1, my B value is negative 2, my C value is 19. So let's see what we got here. So x equals negative b, so it's going to be negative negative 2, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so negative 2 squared, minus 4 times my a value, times my c value, and then all divided by 2 times my a value. All right, so just be careful here. So you got double negatives. So let's see, we're going to have x equals positive 2 plus or minus the square root. Negative 2 squared is negative 2 times negative 2, which is 4. And then here we're going to multiply this all together. So 4 times 1 times 19. So you're going to get a minus uh, 76 and then all divided by 2. Okay, then next, what we're going to do here is we're going to have 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 72, all divided by 2. So when I did 4 take away 76, I ended up with negative 72. And so remember with square roots of negative values, don't overthink it. We're just going to plop out that i right there. And then 72, you need to think about what can you break that into on your perfect squares. And you kind of want to start with big numbers if you can, you know, and use your calculator if you need to, it's fine. And so it's going to end up being the square root of 36 and the square root of 2. 2 times 36 is 72, and now I can square root the 36. So I'm going to end up with, I'm going to kind of clean this up a little bit. When I square root this, I like to put the 6 first then the i, and then the square root of 2. If you kind of switch up the order, it's not incorrect. It's just this is the way you're going to see it. If you watch other videos or look online, um, this is how it typically looks. Okay, so that's going to take the place of this right here. So now I'm left with 2 plus or minus 6i square root of 2 all over 2. And then if you look at this, you look at just these three parts. Are they reducible by a common value? Yes, they're all reducible by a factor of 2. So be careful. 2 divided by 2, that does become a 1. You do want to put that there because um, it's not understood like in the previous one. Then plus or minus um, 6 divided by 2 is 3. And then i square root of 2. And then 2 divided by 2 is 1. So you have a denominator of 1 which really, whenever you have a denominator of 1, you really no longer need to have a fraction there. So I'm just going to go ahead and stop. And so that takes care of that one. All right, let's see. We already knocked out number 9 in class. Let's see, we did 10 and 11 and 12. Let's see. Okay, so we need to look at 13, 14, and 15. Okay, cool. So that kind of relates to what we did on our last lesson. So the absolute value, don't overthink it. It's your distance from zero. So you're trying to figure out how can this expression be 11 units from zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to take 2x minus 3 and set it equal to 11. Or 2x minus 3 could be equal to negative 11. All right, so from here, you just solve these. It should be fairly simple. So let's see, we're going to add 3. So we end up with 2x equals 14. And then divide by 2. And so we're going to end up with x equals 7 as one of my answers. And then over here, let's see, we're going to add 3. And let's see, so we get 2x equals negative 8. Then divide by 2. And we're going to get x equals negative 4. And there we go. Those are my two solutions. So if you plug them in, uh, one of them will give you 11. The other will give you negative 11. But once you take the absolute value, that makes no difference because absolute value is just asking you for a distance that is 11 units from 0. Um, okay. So then down here, the, the 
the absolute value inequality, sure, that can be a little tricky. And so my suggestion is if you're having a really tough time, just follow the rules. If you're, if like, you know, if math is kind of your thing, then sure, let's make sure you take that deeper dive and try to get that deeper um, understanding. But what we're doing here is this expression, its distance needs to be less than 15 from zero. So if zero is like right here, I cannot venture off more than 15 in either direction. Now, what makes it complicated is it's not just X. If it was just the absolute value. If it was just this, it would be pretty simple. It would just be from negative 15 to positive 15 and we'd be done. And that would be my answer, right? So it's just saying this distance needs to be less than 15 from zero. So I couldn't go 15 steps either direction, right? But the problem here is it's not quite that simple, right? Um, what we're dealing with instead is uh, we have that uh, 2x plus 3 in the middle. But it's still kind of the same idea. I need to be between 15 and negative 15. So that's what I'm going to do. This expression, 2x plus 3, we're going to squeeze it. It needs to be um, greater than negative 15 because I can't go more than 15 to the left. But it also needs to be less than positive 15 because I can't go more than 15 to the right on my number line, right? I can't go more than 15 in either direction. But there, like I said, it's a little bit more complicated because you have the 2 times x plus 3. So then what we do from here is we just go ahead and simplify this to have x um, isolated. So we'll start by subtracting 3 from all three parts here. And so let's see, we get negative 18 is less than 2x, which is less than 12. And then we'll go ahead and divide by 2 in each spot. And so, so we end up with negative 9 is less than x, which is then less than 6. So that's where my solution is. My solution is everything between negative 9 and 6. And this is, you know, the number line is really kind of there to help you. Um, it's, I'm more concerned about the interval notation, which here would be from negative 9 to 6 like that. So this is what you'll be graded on. Um, the number line could give you partial credit if you're kind of doing some good stuff over here, but then something goes awry on your notation. But really, this is what you'll be graded on is based off of the interval notation. Okay, uh, last one. And so what you'll notice different about 15 is instead of being a less than symbol or less than or equal to, right, it's a greater than or equal to symbol. Same thing if it were greater than, we have to follow a different rule. Because now what we're saying, once again, if uh, let me simplify this problem for a second, and then we'll look at what we're actually dealing with. So if I had like the absolute value of x is greater than or equal to 5, what we'd be saying is my numbers need to be more than or equal to 5 units away from 0. So here's 0. Your distance needs to be greater than. You need to stay away, farther away, 5 units or more. So you need to be 5 units or more away from zero, right? In either direction. In either direction, you need to stay five, greater than five units away from zero. Okay. So, um, but that's not the reality, though. The reality is we have a little bit more going on inside the absolute value right here. And so, if you follow the directions, what we, what we do here is you take the inside part, 2x plus 5, and it needs to be greater than or equal to 5, because that distance needs to be more than five units are equal to five units away from zero, or that expression needs to be less than or equal to negative five. So you got to flip it and change the sign. Okay, I know it might seem weird, but what this is doing is now over here where negative five is, I'm saying I have to be less than, I have to be to the left of that. I need to be further away from zero, right? So that's kind of what's taking place. That's why you reverse it and change it to a negative because now we're talking about the other direction. This is talking about the right side over here, which is kind of, that's a little bit easier to understand. Yes, I want this expression to be greater than or equal to 5. And then this expression here, I want it to be less than or equal to negative 5 because I need my distance to be at least 5 units away. Okay, so now let's get down to business and just solve this solve each one or simplify them. So let's see, subtract 5 from both sides. So let's see, I end up with 2x is greater than or equal to 0. And then if I divide both sides by 2, 
zero divided by two is actually, it's still just zero. So that's one of my solution sets. Then my other set over here, let's see, I'm going to subtract by five on both sides. So I'm left with two X is less than or equal to negative 10. And then we'll divide by two on both sides. And we're going to get X is less than or equal to negative five. And so just be careful. Once again, I think the number line will help you if you plot this on here to kind of visualize this a little better. So let's see. So we'll put negative five right here. And X is all the numbers that are less than or equal to negative five. So we're going to go right there. And then my other solution set is saying that X, um, on the other hand, X could be greater than or equal to zero. And that would be good too. That would actually give me... Um, that would satisfy this inequality. So if I pick any number in either set, it would be true. Then last, I need to go ahead and put this into interval notation. So always do it from left to right. <clears throat> so from left, I'm going from negative infinity to negative five, and we'll go ahead and bracket that in. And then union, then we're gonna bracket in from zero to positive infinity and on our infinity symbols we always use parentheses and then since i had the greater than or equal to that's why i bracketed in the negative five and the zero part okay well i hope this helps y'all prepare and i look forward to seeing y'all next week